let's go live now to Queen's Park, where and incoming NDP leader Marit Stiles is speaking about the Ford right government's now, plan so for surgeries this. here in the province. Make no mistake, Doug Ford is misleading you when he says that funding surgeries in private for-profit clinics won't have an impact on Ontarians. We know Ford has been scheming for years to privatize our health care system. His government has been following the privatization playbook to a T. Step one. Starve the public system of desperately needed funds, suppress the wages of exhausted health care workers, and push our system to the brink. And what we're seeing today, that's step two. His government pushing people desperate for care towards private, for-profit health clinics. It was clear in the press conference earlier this morning that Doug Ford is fine with for-profit facilities requiring extra fees or upselling. And those are fees Ontarians will have to pay for, yes, with their credit card, not their OHIP card. It means getting upsold on a lens for a price or a room fee to stay overnight. It means also these changes mean more healthcare workers driven out of our hospitals. And let's be completely clear, Ford's privatization scheme will not reduce the wait times for surgeries, and it sure as heck won't fix our healthcare staffing crisis. These workers will come from the same pool. And whoever is left behind in our hospitals will be the folks that are going to be dealing with the most vulnerable and increasingly complex patients and populations, with fewer and fewer people to care for them. Premier Ford said today it's, it's not either or. Well, that's, that's true. It, 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 that's not true. It is either or. We can't afford to fund two systems or pay the profits of shareholders. This will not end here. He is going to privatize our system further. We, we saw that today. He was pretty clear about it. No question. So on behalf of every Ontarian, I want to tell you I'm going to fight to protect our publicly funded, publicly delivered health care system, health care that's based on your needs, not your ability to pay. We in the NDP will fight for investment in our public system, for bringing workers back to the front lines and keeping them there, by making sure they're paid fairly and treated with respect. Because if we don't stop him, Doug Ford is going to do more damage. He's going to sell off our public health care system the same way he sold off our green belt, and we're not going to let him get away with it. And I'm happy to take questions. Art, if I'm waiting for a cataract surgery that I need or a hip surgery that I need, I, I, I need that now. I don't mm -hmm. want to wait for mm -hmm. Ford to, as you say, try and attract more workers back to the public system. Isn't this the best way to tackle the surgical backlog now? You know, first of all, I would just say, I would start by saying that, um, you know, Doug Ford talked today about, you know, the status quo. Well, this this is not this, the, the health care system as we see it right now is not it, it, it was created. The crisis was created by Doug Ford and this government and and to some extent the previous government before them. Um, the system as it exists right now um, is not working up to its full capacity. But that's because the government has failed to invest. Right. They failed to follow through on on spending commitments. They've sat on almost a billion dollars in health care funding instead of actually spending that in our hospitals right now. They are they're holding um, holding on on Bill 124 and appealing it in the courts. They're trying to keep health care workers' wages down at a time when they should be actually working really hard to attract them and to hold on to them. And this plan, this plan isn't going to mean that people get services faster or better. It's going to mean that more and more people are left behind, right? Because it's going to pull more and more resources out of our health care system, out of our, out of our public hospitals, and leave more and more people waiting for more serious uh, and significant uh, care. And on the upselling, the government contends this happens in the public system. Hey, do you want a private room? I mean, what do you say to that? Yeah, well, first of all, it's not supposed to happen in the in the public health care system, right? And the government, I mean, in fact, uh, France Gelina, our health critic and MP, uh, introduced a bill uh, just this past fall to get the government to actually put some teeth into existing rules and regulations around this. This is not supposed to be happening in our health care system. It's not OK. Um, and, and we make the case that, uh, and I think it's a really important point to make, that when you're a patient and you're at your most vulnerable, that's not when you should be, uh, a doctor should be trying to upsell you services. 
Um, we need to protect patients from that, and we need to ensure we don't end up with a system that is a two-tiered healthcare system where you know some people can afford you know uh, the Cadillac version, and other people have to uh, have to have to deal, have to settle for the what was what did Rob Ferguson say the Chevy? Pinto. <laughs> Thank you. For legal Mark, yeah. reasons. You say here that you're going to fight this, but we've seen time and time again, every time the NDP says they're going to fight something, you really have no tools, there is no power because you don't have a majority, you're not even close to being able to have the votes to be able to topple this. So how really can the NDP realistically fight something like this, as you say? You know, I think we don't do it alone. Right? We don't do it alone, and we're not alone in this because I can, I am sure, and I have been talking to a lot of Ontarians over the last, over the last year, from all across this province, that people are not going to settle for this. Uh, and we've seen when people come together, uh, when the unions come together, when people come get, you know, stand up in their communities, uh, they can make a lot of noise, and we can get this government to back down, and that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, but I can tell you, we will use every tool we have in the toolbox to fight them on this. So what are you suggesting here? I mean, last time the unions banded together over. Uh, the notwithstanding clause for the general strike. Are you suggesting something like that could happen again over this? I think what we need to do is show the government that we mean business, you know, and, and we'll have to talk about what that looks like. But, uh, you know, I see Ontarians every day standing up uh, all across this province um, against the government's sell-off of the Greenbelt, um, standing outside Conservative MPP offices, um, we have the tools to be able to push back against this, and I think we just have to send a very strong message to Doug Ford that we're not going to settle for this as Ontarians, as the NDP. And I think Ontarians uh, are depending on the NDP, um, not just to stand up against Doug Ford and to push back against this, but to also offer a strong alternative in the next election. Mark, All right, what, do what about the, the fact that... that oh, go ahead. Sorry, no. oh. what, do you, what do you make of the fact that... Um, President of the Ontario Hospital Association, President of the Ontario Medical Association, the CEOs of Sunnybrook, UHN, are all saying this is actually a good thing. You know, I can't speak for them, but I can tell you what I'm hearing from uh, our frontline healthcare workers and many of the experts in our healthcare system who care about the public healthcare system who are saying this is a this is going to be a disaster for our public hospitals. I mean. You just have to look at the facts. We've been listening to incoming NDP leader Mart Stiles uh, speaking about the Ford government's plan for surgeries in Ontario.